Now then, welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to grow your own worms. Maybe grow is not the word, maybe say breed them. This all happened because I bought a tub of worms away down in the borders. They were three pound a tub. Can you guess how many worms were in the tub? There was ten. Ten worms for three pound. So that was working out at 30p a worm. And I thought there has to be a better way than this. So that took me back to when I was fishing over one day in Ireland. And there was a group of lads fishing up from me. And there was boys lower down from me. And I could hear them shouting, you know, fish on, fish on, got one, got one. And I'm in the middle and I couldn't get a grill at all. I, I just couldn't understand why I wasn't catching one. It was just then that an old man came on me. His name was Tommy Mitchell. And Tommy says to me, how are you getting on, son? You getting money? I says, no, none. He says, none? He says, reel in your line there. Did I see, and I reels in the line. I had one look at the worm in the end of the line. He says, ah, there's your problem there. He says, you're not using the six tails. You do know what the six tails are, don't you? And I'm like, no. Oh, he says, oh, come on, I'll show you. He says, imagine this is your worm here. He says, put the point of the hook in the middle of the worm, put it in about an inch, and then pull the point out. Now, push the worm up to the eye. Now you're left with two big tails dangling. Get another worm, do the same again, in the middle, about an inch, pull the point out and push it up the shank. Get one more worm. Do the same again, put it in, the point in the middle, but this time don't pull the point out. He says, now look at that there. He says, you'll have six tails, all hanging and wiggling and jiggling. He says, salmon will go nuts for that. That's the right big mouthful, and that's the only way to fish for salmon, is the six tails. So if you don't remember anything else today, Remember, if you fish for salmon, you've got to fish with the six tails with a worm. As once they see them six tails coming wiggling and jiggling down, and they're swimming up, they'll just hammer that right away. You strike right away, and you'll pull that hook straight into the scissors in the corner of its mouth. Fight goes on, get your fish in, forceps it, take your hook it, take your quick picture, release your fish and that is the best way to fish for salmon with a worm you'll up your chances by 90% using the six tails and you can take that to the bank that's the only way and the best way to fish for salmon with a worm use the six tails so I decided I'm going to try and grow my own worms see how it goes because I'd heard that much about it everywhere so I looked in YouTube and I watched loads of videos hundreds and I could only find one old man that was actually growing worms for salmon and trout fishing so he, he showed me in YouTube how to do it and now I'm going to show you okay so the total cost of the whole wormery is going to be £14. That's all it is. £14. Now, my pint in my local hotel is a fiver. So it's not even the cost of three pints of beer. But you wait till you see how this turns out. And it's the best way I've ever seen of growing loads of worms. At the end, we'll have a wee look through my wormery here. Because I only started with about 10 worms. So, let's dive straight into this and crack on. And I'll show you what to do, okay? So, 
the first thing you need to do is go and get yourself half a bucket of rainwater, okay? And then you're going to go to Amazon or eBay and get yourself a coconut fibre natural organic coconut coir brick. They're £7. Now all it is, is it's only compost, coconut compost. Don't substitute any of that for any other compost, because ordinary compost will have phosphates, nitrogen, acids, all that, and all the nasty things that worms don't like, it will kill worms. So only use the coconut coir brick. You get them for £7, as I said, on eBay or Amazon. So that's what you need to start it away, okay? Then, so what you're going to need now is to go down to Poundland or Pound Stretcher in your town, or you can go to B&Q, Home Bargains, any of that, and get yourself one of these tubs here, right? These cost three pound. That's all the cost is three pound. If you can, try and get yourself a black one, because worms don't like the light. I couldn't get another black one. This is the only one they had left, so it was either take that or nothing. So I took this one. Okay. Drill twelve holes in it, four, four, and four on the lid. Just an average size hole. That's all you do, right? Now, when your coconut brick comes, soak it in a bucket of water like that there, okay? Let it sit for half an hour. Go and get yourself a cup of coffee. Come back and turn it over and soak the other half. If there's any water left, simply just pour it out into an old pot or something, okay? Now, get the two hands into it and break it all up into nice compost. That's all you do. And it'll leave you a bit up to here, say. The line, because it, the coconut brick will go about three times in size, okay? Then the next thing you're going to need is this. It's a kitchen roll, okay? Very simply, just unravel it. Right, and start turning it into bits and soak that in water, okay? Toilet roll tube, do the same. Just unravel it and start turning it into bits, right? So, when you get a big pile, soak it in your bucket of rainwater if you can. Now, you can use tap water if you're stuck. But I prefer to go with everything organic. So try to use rainwater. But if you haven't got rainwater line, you can you can just use a uh, tap water. All right. So soak that in water. Give it a good rinse off and put that on top of the coconut compost. You're looking for about an inch and a half or two inches of the cardboard. Then on top of that, you want to get yourself four good handfuls of dead leaves. Give them a wee rinse out in rainwater and then put that on top of your cardboard. And then to finish you off, get yourself an old bit of uh, brown bag, KFC bag or a McDonald's bag. And put that on top of the leaves, that's just to seal in the damp, the wet. Now, you need to send for your worms. You get your worms in Amazon or eBay. I think they're like £4, £8 and £12. Now, I would only go for the £4 pack because these worms will just multiply like crazy all the time. Now, I'll tell you what the difference is. Garden worms here and the worms you get at the tackle shop, they're called dendrobinas. Okay? 
they lay one egg a year. Tiger worms, the type you're looking for, compost tiger worms, they lay an egg every four weeks. Every four weeks. That egg will lie for 30 days, then it'll hatch out. And in that egg, there'll be one to five worms in that one egg. So basically, if you start off with, say, 10 tiger worms, by 60 days, you should have 60 worms in there, and you only started with 10. Can you see where this is going? Because then they just keep multiplying and eating and multiplying. These things are just machines. All they do is eat and make wee worms and eat and make wee worms all the time. When you're in bed sleeping, you're at work, you're up the river, you're watching TV, these will be running in the background all the time, just eating and making wee worms. So, we started off with 10 here. I just bought the four pound pack. Okay, so you're gonna pay three pound for your tub, it's just an average size tub, you maybe have one of them kicking about the house, right? okay? One of them, right, your coconut block is going to be £7 and £4 for your worms is £14. That's all you need. Right, so what we're going to do is we'll open mine and have a wee look. So we started off with 10 worms, let's see how far we've got. So I started this in December. Okay, so that's like January, February. See about 11 weeks we're into this. Well, let's see what we've got. Now, the first thing you're going to need to do is feed your worms. And this is what you feed them on. A banana and tea bags. That's all you feed them on. Banana and tea bags. So, feed your worms every two weeks. Now, it doesn't have to be exactly on the 14th day. Just get the calendar and put a big X on it. Say the day, for argument's sake, is the 10th. Go to the 24th and put a big black dot or a big cross and then you'll know that that's when the worms should be fed. But you can go, you know, 18 days, 19 days. I mean, you can go on holiday, and as long as the worms have got a banana and tea bags and cardboard in there, they're good for a month, maybe even more. So don't worry about that. So, this is what I do, right? Here's a banana. Now, worms don't have any teeth, right? So all they'll do is they'll suck away at that. And once it's out the skin, it'll go soft. Five tea bags, okay? Take the tea out of four tea bags and lay the fifth tea bag with a wee hole in it just to give the worms easy access to it. Don't worry about the bag, the elite bag and all. So I can honestly say that after every 14 days I went and looked for the tea bag and there's never there. And I've looked for the banana and it's gone every single time. They just go nuts for bananas. So let's have a wee dig through and let's see if the banana's there. See, look, there's worms already. So we only started with about 10. So let's have a look and see. No. The, t the tea bags are put in here. There's more worms, look. Let's see, have a wee dig through this side. I don't want to really disturb this bit here because that's where I put the banana in here. So I reckon that's where all the group of worms is going to be and all the eggs will be in this pot. Usually the worms you'll find will all stick together. Just gently get through it. There's more tiger worms, look. Salmon go crazy for these. 
You fish the six tails, look. The worms are all the shop coming there, look. Look, more worms. There you are, look at that there, look. Loads of worms, loads of worms in there. Look, plenty of worms in there. Now only started with 10. So be right, there should be at least 60 in there. And there's at least 60 in there, all right. And that's me, no even getting near the heart in the middle. Look at that. There's tons of worms in there. These guys are just machines. All they do is eat and make wee worms. Right, so... Now, treat them ever so gently here like this. And we'll give them a banana. So this is what we do. Take a wee trench there like that. Okay. Put the banana in there. Right, and just cover that up like that. That's you. Good to go. These wee buggers are just machines. They just eat, eat, eat all the time. There's a young, there's a young worm there. That's not that old. Tons of worms. Right, so, tell you what we'll do. We'll dig a wee hole in here. Right. Then we'll put the tea bags in. Just put, that's your four loose tea bags in there, okay? Now this last one, just put it on top. So when you come back in a couple of weeks time, if you still see that tea bag there, don't put in any more tea bags. If you go and you see the banana still there, don't add any more bananas. Now at the start they might be a wee bit slow, you know, getting to the banana and stuff, just give them time to settle in and try not to go in hoping through it and upsetting it and because it's a worm nursery in there with full of eggs and stuff and you wouldn't like somebody coming into your house wrecking and tearing at it so if you can see that banana gone that's all you're worried about because they're mult multiplying all the time And that is all you do, and then at the end, get yourself a bit of brown paper, okay? Just put that in the top, like that, just to keep in the dampness, best you can. And the next time I come and see that there, and I have a wee look through that and say, yeah, uh, nine, ten weeks time. I'd be expecting there to be well over 300 worms in that. Now, I only started with 10. You're better starting with a small pack. Now, I started with two wormeries. But that's just me. I mean, you don't need to. You can only start with one. Remember, try and get yourself a black tub. Now I started with 10 worms in this and the banana was in here No, no banana, the banana's gone I really don't want to dig down there any further, there's worms already, look Look at the wiggles of that That's tiger worms for you Remember, it's got to be tiger worms, not dendrobina. Make sure that you buy tiger worms. As you can see, if you look here, I've got a, a little red and yellow line. You see it? That's how it gets its name, tiger worms. They're absolutely brilliant for fishing. Now look in here. Look at that. Worms everywhere. Now I started with 10 worms 
in each one. I don't really want to get near the middle because I reckon that's where all the eggs are. Look. There's a young worm there, look. A wee new worm. Ah, oh, there's worms everywhere. Loads. Now I'm sure that's a bit... At least 25 or 30 worms already and I haven't even been near, near this side yet. Now I started with 10. It's very, very simple to grow your own worms. Very simple. You remember every worm in here is worth 30p. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to use these worms this year. If I want worms I'll just go to the tackle shop and buy them. And I'll let these multiply and multiply and multiply. And I reckon it's come next spring I should have a couple of thousand. Oh my lord look at that. Worms everywhere. Look at the wriggles of the one. Imagine the six tails with them boys on. Some go crazy for them. Look at that. Worms everywhere. And only started with ten. Look at that wee guy there. There's a wee new worm. Look. That's a wee new worm. You see the stripes on him. And the heels soon grow into a big full worm. I don't want it to really dig and hope and tear or in it. Loads of worms in there. I seen one lady, lady had put a comment on on uh, Amazon and she bought a four pound pack of worms and when she opened it she only thought there was about ten worms or so and she was I think she was quite annoyed because she she thought she didn't get many worms for her money. I'm sure if you go to Amazon and read the comments you'll you'll get her comment right away. But then she says she was very happy after a few weeks because it worked out that um, within a very short space of time she had loads of worms. Look at that wee guy. Look at that little baby worm. Tiny wee guy. Tiniest wee worm. So it just shows you that they're all laying eggs like crazy. Now, laying eggs. These guys really start to lay eggs from March until November. That's when they really go for it and start firing out the eggs. So if you're going to make a wormery, start now. So the very first thing you want to do is get yourself a bucket or an old basin. Leave it outside and get some rainwater. But half fill it. Then put your coconut brick in, just slightly cover it, leave it for half an hour, turn it over, soak the other half, come back out, any excess water, pour it off into an old pot or anything at all, and then get your sleeves rolled up. You can wear rubber gloves if you like and start to break up, up the any compost. Keep it good and wet and damp. You can see that there, that it's no sodden but it's good and wet. Then add your toilet rolls, your kitchen rolls, about an inch and a half to two inches if you want it. Fold it up that way. That, that's the way that I would do it. And then put leaves on top of it. About four good handfuls of dead leaves. Bring them home. You get dead leaves everywhere under a hedgerow, the side of your wood, in the forest, up the park. 
Dead leaves are everywhere. They're easy to get. And then at the end, to seal them in, get a KFC bag or a McDonald's bag. Just like that there. Put that over the top. It keeps them lovely and damp. And that's the job done. Super simple, but these are just machines. They just breed like anything, but you must make sure that you get tiger worms. You get the worms on Amazon or eBay. You'll get the coconut block on Amazon or eBay. And the whole thing should cost you about £14. That's what it cost me. And you see the worms I've got, and I only started with 10 worms each. It's a great way. And it's... It passes your time in the winter time. I love mucking about with the worms when the fishing season ends. It's great fun. It's brilliant. I love it. And that is how you grow your own worms for salmon fishing and remember to put the six tails on and I guarantee you that will up your catch rate by 90% when you put the six tails on and you can take that to the bank just a worm put the point of your hook through the middle about an inch pull it up now you've got two big tails wiggling same again now you have four tails wiggling the last one now you have six tails wiggling you just bounce trot that down when there's big flood water, the salmon will just hit it right away, no problem. So there you go folks, that is how you grow your own worms for salmon fishing. Now the worms will really start to fire out the eggs from March to November. They still will lay eggs November, December, January, February and then they'll really start going again. So I'm hopefully going to have a couple of thousand worms each in these come the start of the season next year and I'll be putting updates on it. So there you go, that is how you rear worms and grow your own. Remember every worm in there is worth 30p, so I reckon there maybe be what, about 90 worms in each one now. And only started with 10 and what about 9 or 10 weeks or so something like that so there you go folks and I hope you enjoyed that I'll put more updates on it and uh, if you have any questions you can let me know okay guys as you can see it's I'm sitting here in the rain I need to go and that is how you grow your own worms save yourself a fortune Use the six tails. And I wish you a lot. Cheerio.